Good Wednesday evening, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. Big thank you to everyone who is joining us live. However, I'll bet there's a few of you that are going to be watching later on um, in the week. So thank you for Why? that as well. Tonight, today might be a, a special day for some people, but you know what, honey? Your presence. Not, not for us. Your your presence is my present. Yeah. Well. <coughs> is this Maybe. thing on? And I don't know. Is it is it on? Mine's on. All righty. What's up, Josh? Good to see you. Um, so we are really uh, <clears throat> dang, we're really excited about having uh having this little technique tutorial. Hello, Kevin and Al. And the first three of y'all, thank you so much. You all being supporters and promoters and everything that is awesome. We really appreciate that. Um, and Freddie and Randy and everyone's hopping on now. So what we're going to do here is the agenda for the evening. We're going to focus on Wally wing techniques, how to do it. We're going to finish some, a couple flies as well, but the big thing is how simple it is to tie a Wally wing. Um, and we're also going to give away if I can find it. Yep. We're going to give away this ceramic dubbing rake at 945. So Katie at 945, stop what I'm doing and we will give this away and you have to be present. Happy Valentine's Day, Todd and Randy. Um, also, um, tonight's giveaway has been brought to you by Chat GPT AI, courtesy of Google. Google. Um, again, tonight's giveaway is courtesy of um, Chat GPT from Google. Well, that sounds pretty fancy, but Jay Stalker is the one that gave us this dubbing rake to give away. Oh, yeah, those um, guys too. <laughs> um, but what's up, Troy from New Mexico and Jeffrey Swalls? Happy Valentine's Day, Randy. I think I said to you, Todd, as well. And we had some phenomenal um, caribou caddises, sands the caddis or the caribou. Uh, on some of them, and that was great. And if I've said it once, I've said it a bunch of times. We'll go live on Instagram. If I've said it once, I've said it a bunch of times. We want to see you guys make an attempt, regardless whether you've got all the right materials. Um, if you, in this case, there's a lot of you all that use elk or deer hair in place of caribou, and that was great. I would much rather see a caribou caddis with elk. It really is more like a ex caddis or elk hair caddis. But I'd rather see that than 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 you not try to do it, uh, just because you didn't have the right material. So thank you so much for you guys. Um, at the end of the day, we're here to have fun, and uh, and that that helps out quite a bit. But speaking of caribou, caribou can be very difficult to find these days. Mm -hmm. I've been looking a little bit here and there, and um, one of the last submissions that Katie is going to show in a little bit is. Mr. Stephen Hankins. In just a second. In just a second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it's Stephen Hankins. And what's up, Sam, over on Instagram? Sam, come over and check us out on YouTube. Um, you'll be able to see a little bit better, and I'll actually pay attention to, to you more. Um, uh, Stephen Hankins, who is is it not with, he is Magpie Materials. And you guys have seen me use his biots before. Um, I noticed... Charlie Craven, and um, he knows a thing or two about tying. So, what's up, Jeff and Terry and Steve? Doing it. Yep, Randy and Josh and Howie. Um, so, I got to talk real quick. So, okay. you can just be quiet for a minute. Yes, we have a poll. I'm ending the poll now. The poll was Valentine's Day, yes or no. And the results were yes, 85%, no, 15%. So thank you for participating in that. I voted that I placed my vote, so I hope that you guys placed yours too. And now I'm going to, in case some of you guys can't stay the whole time tonight because you might have other plans, I'm going to share with you all some of these lovely caribou caddis pictures that um, you all submitted so um let's pull up some of those what do you yeah. think 
There we go. Better. Okay. So here we go. We've got Al Caton, trio of caribou, caddis. Oh, Al. And Where I guess it? you would say caddis. Sigh. Caddises. Caddis. I don't know. Steve's got the right comment. He says he tells her, his wife that she's special every day, not just Valentine's Day. Mm, I'd love to hear her answer to that. <laughs> okay, Josh Riston. Lovely. I really like that messy look on the head. Ken Brooks. Thanks, Ken. I have to leave so soon tonight, but if you do, I made sure that I put so that we could be sure and get you in there. Um, we also had Jimmy. Welcome, Sam. Good to have Mr. Looper on here tonight, too. Stephen Hankins. And is that who won last week? Gift card? No. Okay. Uh, Fly tying one, two, one. Sent in this, um, sent out, shared with us the watercolor of the caribou caddis. I thought that was pretty cool. Dan Bull X72. Well, Dave Hall. Billy Bugs. Billy Bugs was was pretty light. That that was the last one, not the ones on right now. That I asked him about it, and he said that that is not dyed, it's not bleached, it's just regular old um, caribou that was just a lighter patch. Huh. Sometimes you get unique variants. Mm -hmm. Gray Ghost also, and Freddie. Love the body on that one, Freddie. Freddie got a lot of good comments on his yeah. his photography between his and Stevens were the the two that that. I can't, and I, don't, and I can't remember. I think it was Stevens that Colby actually sent me a note and said, Hey, I like that one, man. Yeah. I was like, Yep. And then we got a last minute submission from the man, Steve Yates. Lit, solid background. You can't go wrong with that. Um, and that's it. I'm not going to show you the last thing because the last thing is um, the number that chat picked between one and 200 before the show started we're so start at 9:45. at 9 45 i'm gonna have you guys pick a number between one and 200 don't do it yet wait till 9 45 i'll tell you all right that's it right. that's all i got that's all she wrote so there you go awesome thank you katie and truman how are you not slackers you got here relatively on time so we went over all those pictures. That's what I'm talking about. That is so awesome. Be able to share the pictures, the flies that you all tied of the past week. And um, to start flattening again, any new tires out there, got get a good rotating vice. So um, I don't know if Justin has one or wants one, but I'm sure there's people on here that have got, are in both situations. Um, but seeing the flies that you all tie is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and and just sharing them and seeing, it's cool. So once again, tonight what we're going to do is we're going to tie Wally wings. We're going to do two of them. Nine forty five. We're going to do our our um, giveaway for the uh, for the dubbing rake right here. So let's get going. Oh, I was talking about the caribou. So the one with Bill uh, Bill Brashears that that he posted was caribou, but it was really light. And mine's like a, a medium done or so. And I was talking with Stephen Haken's Magpie Materials, um, who's on here right now. And um, I, I got him to dig through and find. And I'll let you know when, when I get it. But he sent me a really a dark, lot darker piece. This None of them are dyed, just natural, uh, natural colors. But um, as I was saying earlier, uh, I saw Charlie Craven talking about his caribou. And... Uh, I'm like, well, I got to give it a try. So that is en route. If you didn't, if you weren't able to find caribou, but you still want some caribou, give Stephen Hankins with Magpie Materials a shout. So let's look at the vice. Let's look at a, a couple flies here real quick. Here is one. This is a size 12, a big one. Um, Mar this is a Marsh Brown. Katie, if you'll switch this over. Um, this is one that I tied in about five minutes just now, right before the show. Um, just to make sure I had all the materials laid out. So this is, um, this is, yeah. So you, the wings are what we're going to kind of pay attention to um, for this one. This is, a, um, like I said, March Brown. And the one we posted earlier today 
is right here. And this was this is going to go in a special little holder because this is Katie's Valentine's Day fly. This is, I'm sure you could fish it and it'd be just fine. But this is the one that we posted. And one thing that that um see how the wings are positioned a little bit differently because I want it to look like more more like a heart kind of. Um, but one thing um, uh, with these wings is they look delicate and they look. Um, hard to do. And I'm going to show you that they're, I mean, I'm not saying that they're like bulletproof because they're not, but they're a lot more um, forgiving than you would think. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and they can be manipulated and they're a lot more, a lot easier to tie than, than you would think as well. So um, this is one we posted today. So let's put this one back in the holder and we will get started. And as always, what's up, Ed? You missed your picture just a few minutes ago, but you can watch it later. What's up, Nan? You had a nice little video today. Thank you, Randy. The symmetry can be a little bit difficult, um, but it's not. Uh, you can, like I said, you can just kind of manhandle them. Do you want the, you guys decide do you want well, i'll do two flies tonight the first one or one of them will do no um the, the super easy way and the second one, the next one will do the easy way do you want super easy first or just easy first you guys tell me whoever probably whoever says something first is what i'll do um this is while well, you're saying super easy or just easy first uh this is a size 12 arex freshwater 501 That'll be our first one. And our second one, we'll put on just a regular old TMCO 100 size 12 just to mix it up because they're both good hooks. I've got okay. two votes for easy. Okay, we'll do easy. So what I'm doing is I've got, um, let's pull this out so I can show you. We've got brown 12 aught Semper Fly, classic wax thread, nothing fancy. And I'm going to bring it over. We're going to do same style fly um, that we that was showing just now. And I've got a bag. We'll switch over to one of the other cameras. Honey. Yeah, I was just going to come over and fix that one. Which one are you going to fix? Uh, well, that one's good right there. I mean, are you going to zoom in or what, what do you think? I'm just going to make it be a little better. To, um... flip, flip it over to that one so they can watch, watch what you're doing as you're moving it around. Okay. I'll just hold them right here so you can do it. Steve, it always looks easy when you're doing it. Find it hard. Well, I'll try to, I'll just stop me and ask the questions. I know Al, um, Al, I'm, yeah, by answering that question, Al set through um, a, a demonstration of these the other day. It's funny. Um, I hadn't seen, a, a, I'm pretty sure I've seen them, but I haven't seen a Wally Wing really posted in a long time. And I swear, once we started doing this, I saw half a dozen of them the past couple of days. So I was like, good grief. Um, okay, so will you switch over to the side camera, please, ma'am? Well, I was on the side camera. Nope, that's why I was like, switch it up. There we go. Okay, so I've this is basically from a junk store, it's not a junk store, I, that shouldn't have said that. So, when you go into a fly shop and they've got like the, the junk bin, there we go, and then it's like a dollar a piece, like yeah, that's what these came from. This is just mallard, this one's died. Wood duck, I believe, gold something. I remember when we got those. Yep. I and mean, that it, was it was a fly shop that was shut shut down. down. Yeah. And, and like they're just kind of kind of junky. So yeah, I'm just showing you, you don't have that. But they, fancy, you know, I mean, you don't have that fancy. Now the pink ones. Here, here's more like the the fancy kind. Do you want to go out and buy just whatever? It's not fancy, but just the smaller packages for different colors. Um. So here was the the pink that I that I posted today. Is that one? But you can use a lot of different, um, a lot of different kinds. So, hello, I'm Chris. Gonna, I'm just going to start with a regular, regular old mallard. And and that brand is called Dan Bailey's. That's what this is. Called. Yeah, just whatever. Dan Bailey's. All right. Premium so, like fly said, this, tying quality. This is a. Let me put it back on this side thing so I can show this, please. There we go. Um, so you see, this is kind of a junk piece, junk feather here, and um, hopefully it'll work. But all we're gonna do is strip the sides off. Damn, 
pitch here. Chinese next for the best. Yeah. Um, what's up, Chris? Chris gave you a specific. Hey, Katie, Katie. Hey, Katie, Katie. Um, so I'm just cleaning up the bottom. That's all I did. So we're going to do the easy first and then super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and start trying to um, fold it. So you can see how it's got the fold going this way, like the, the natural curvature of the feather going this way. And then when you look at it this way, you can kind of see that. See if I hold it up better. So see how this got almost like a part right in the middle right there. We're going to take that part and accentuate it. We're going to make it bigger or make it crease a little bit more. So that's as easy as, as grabbing it basically by the tip. And we're going to pull it up like this. So you can kind of see what how I've got it right there. And we're going to rock it back and forth. And this takes just some, some finagling. But you're like, wait, you said this was easy. So pull this back. I'm going to take off some more of these feathers. Didn't take off. Okay. So pull this back. Pull it up. So see how it's a little bit more. There we go. See how they got a little more of a V? So we're going to try to do that a little bit more. And if you do that, see how just that's kind of where they're probably an older feather just stripped it all off. So grab another one if I can find my thing and we'll go a little bit quicker on it. Same thing. I'm going to pull this off. Feather finesse. What did you, Kevin? I measured the length of the hook. So you can always go too long, but I was just. That's what it is. I pulled when I pulled this down. So you can see I've got that that much there. I, I measured. I held it up here to the length of the hook, the entire length of the hook, and I made sure it was elite, at least that long. Because that, you know, if, if my hook was as wide as my my tweezers are here, I'd, if I put it here, I don't really need all that. I really just need this much of it. But I want to give myself a little bit of room to to play with. If that makes sense. So let's fold that up. Rocket, and that one worked out a lot better. So you can see, there we go. See how this kind of fold like it looks like it was flying. So we got it curved down this way, and we've got it got that crease in there like that. That's what I wanted to look like really quick. I think A. Hey, I think L. I think yours three dollars a neck. Okay, so that that's what that's all we did just now. So now I'm going to take hold it by the tip. I'm going to grab it and pull it back and pull it through my fingers like this. So let's switch back over to the hook, please, ma'am. So see how I've got that right? Let's see if I can get it. So, so how it's coming up here, and you got that little, little crease in the middle. I'm pinching my fingers, pulling it tight. Like that. I want it to be the length of the hook. Now, one of the the entire length of the hook, shank, bend, eye, and everything. And one of the tips is if you make it too long, you can always cut it shorter after the fly is completely done. If you make it too short, well, you're stuck with it. So now I'm going to get my thread, make sure I'm going to get it right where, right where I want it, which is right about there, because I really just want the, the room to be, you know, two, maybe three turns of hackle in front of the front of my thread. Take my, do my measurement one more time, make sure I'm good. Do a pinch wrap, pull straight down. Put a couple wraps in. Now I want to look and see, make sure that it's not curved, make sure it's pretty much straight, because this is kind of where the symmetry comes in. You want it pretty much straight right there. And when I say pretty much, I mean you want it straight right there. So I'm going to lift this up. Cut that off at an angle. I probably could have stood to put a few more wraps before I cut that, but it turned out okay. So you see how it goes straight on the um, the hook shank and straight out the front. That's what we want. And we'll bring this thread back up. Take the whole piece. 
I want to do a little thread dam here. See how, remember when we've done thread dams in the past, what we want to do is take our thread and jam it right up against there. We're not trying to build a whole bunch of thread wraps here. We'll have to go back and forth. But it's these wraps that really jam that material right up. That's good. Right up against the, the thread in the back. So see how it's going pretty much straight up and down? Easy enough so far. Any questions? That That is the, the next one is a super easy one. But I wanted to show you no tools, just an old junk scrap. Not scrap, but old feather. All right, so Katie might have to figure out which one's going to be the best angle for this. But um, what we want to do is we want to pull some of these fibers down on either side. So when we... That probably, um, when we... Um, Let's see, can you see these on the hook? Yeah, let's look at the hook vise. There we go. I'll try to do this. I'll switch hands here. <clears throat> okay, so you see how I've got four, I think four fibers in this hand, three fibers. That's what I wanted. Let me take it out. So I've got three. Grab three fibers. If you grab four, that's fine. Five, that's fine. You don't really need much more than five. But if you grab two or if you grab one, you might have an issue. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip this away. And when I strip it away, the top two are going to break off. I'm going to be left with that one last one. So I'll hold the tip like this. And then I pull this straight down. All the way. And you see how I've got that little wing kind of made. Now it's got some manipulation to go. But that's made. Now I want to do the same thing with the other side. So this is still a tip. This still has the main part of the feather in it. The, the rachis. And um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab three fibers on this side. Not four. But if you grab four, it's fine. The key is don't grab one. Grab, grab. If you got to know, grab three. So I'm going to grab it by the tip again, the whole tip. Grab these three and just strip them right apart like this. You can see I've got that one fiber left here. See that this, this one fiber? And on the other side, there's one fiber left. And I've got this um, the stem in the middle. And one thing that I haven't really seen anyone else do that I kind of like doing, let's get rid of this little guy, is I'll take my the stem and I'll pull it back like this. And I'll wrap, I'll, I'll let me get my thread back. Undo that a little bit. So I'll pull this back. Make sure it's right on top of the hook shank. Pop that off. So now we've got our wings pretty much pretty much done. I got a little straightening out to do. And I like leaving the, the just kind of consider these guys right here handles. So that's what we'll use to, to kind of manipulate everything. Does that make sense? No, we're being awful quiet now. So just to, to bang this fly out real quick, I'm going to grab a brown Coke de Leon rooster um, feather. Grab, I don't know, maybe six, eight. Don't know exactly. Fibers. Thank you, Jeff. I was getting worried. Um, oh, Chris, thanks. So I want these to be the length of the body, so or the length of the the entire hook, because I like I like on these marsh browns to have big long tails. So I've got it measured. That's about where it's going to go. So I'll cut that about like that. Let's go ahead and see that. It's a little bit too long for me. Even though I just said I want it long, that's a little bit long. See, so we've got our tails there. I'm gonna go under. This is a um, I'm even watch Michael. The next one's even easier. Um, it's just gonna be like a revival. Lots of prints. <laughs> okay, so th this is probably the hardest part, and this is one. This is a technique that I had to watch a bunch of times, and I think it was Juan Ramirez that finally finally clicked. 
Um, so the tails, I'm just going to go under all the tails like this. And those are kind of nice, kind of split a little bit. Put a big open wrap. I'm going to split them into two groups. Let's see. So we got, try again roughly even. When you're looking down in the light like I am right now, it's kind of hard. So if I don't have them even. So I've got one group here. So I'm going to take my thread like this. I'm going to loosen and go in between all those fibers. Do a loose wrap. And then we'll do the same thing going down. And now they're, other than that one that's going crazy. And I'll probably cut it out because I don't want that one. And I don't want to undo anything right now. I've got extra ones. So now I've got our nice split tail. See? And they're not going to cut it. They're not just, um, now see about that technique. If you can get it down is now when your fly gets wet, it's not just going to go right back together. There's actually like figure eight in between um, your, your work. Okay. Looking good so far. All right. This one we're going to use a, we're going to use some K-pop and, and because it's March Brown, we're going to use a uh, separate fly K-pop and March Brown. And uh, the next one might do a buyout on. We'll see. And for those of you all that, that have been watching, um, or not watching, for those of you all, uh, I, I was going to write down a list so I could call you out individually, and I promise you I will, but um, that joined our little supporter group. We really, really, really appreciate you all a lot. And Josh, I believe you're the only one that joined the promoter group. And thank you very, very much, Kevin and Steve and um, Josh. And who, who else is on here? I'm not looking, looking at the comments right now, but I just wanted to say thank you. All right. So now we've got a nice thin noodle, as you can see. And we'll just keep our fingers crossed this long enough for now. So I'm going to bring this down so that the dubbing starts right at the tail. Unfortunately, I've got a nice little bump right of dubbing right there. Just to make it a little fancy, what I'm going to do, we um, switch this to the side view, honey. Thank you. So I'm going to take my bobbin, and if it doesn't hit my light, I'm going to twist it. I'm just going to let it sit there and hang for a second. What that's going to do is it's going to cord up that dubbing. It's going to make it nice and tight, so it'll almost give a little bit of a segmented look as I'm wrapping. So now you can switch it back to the the um, hook, please. There we go. So now I'm going to bring it up, and we're going to do nice, tight, touching wraps. And see how you can see the segmentation there? It's subtle. It's not that, that big a deal, but that's because I corded that up just a little bit. Just like, and we've got a little bit of a, yeah, it's looking nice. We have a little bit of, oh gosh, what is the word I'm looking for now? Taper. We got a little bit of taper already built in because of those wings. So that looks fine. Cool. All right. So now we're going to get our feather out. And because Stephen and I were talking a little bit about hackle the other day, I thought I'd pull out this pretty little um, rusty natural dun that I got a long time ago. You got so a question on there about the dubbing. Get it easier to touch uh, versus twisting. Is there a secret to twisting it? Same same thing that I showed the other day, Al. Just pull um, when you're pulling a, pulling the bit out. Just like every dubbing, it, it's got fibers that that when you if you pull that little glob like this, and that's a big glob, and I can do like a ton of flies of that. You can dub out of this hand, but when you pull now these now they're wrapped. Now that the the fibers are going straight, and I want you to watch. This right here, you can see that little bit. 
take my finger and just just go one way don't go two and just like that and i can't see it now um see how the, just one little twist and it, it's wrapped around now that's one twist i could tighten it up or make it a little bit different but if you'll pull it off there we go so um, so you grab your this is the big chunk of dummy i've got so it's my other hand pull it out see how the that dubbing's kind of lined up still dang it see how it's kind of lined up going straight out from my finger like that so my my thread is holding the dubbing in between my finger and the thread one wrap with my fingers like this and i've got it wrapped around see that so it's that it's that simple um what most people are doing and it's funny because i hear so many people talking about this but yet this is the typically the issue typically is as opposed to putting that much dubbing on they're putting this much dubbing on and that doesn't work um or as silly as it sounds going back and forth don't don't dub like this just one way one way one way just like that does that help a little bit I'm trying to pull this little bit of dubbing off now thank you honey i appreciate you telling me there's a good question on there all right so anywho where was i where are we getting ready to tie some hackle in We'll tie this hackle in, and then we'll do a super easy version. And then we'll be done. We'll do our drawing and be done for the night. Give you all some extra time to hang out with your loved ones. All right. So I'm just going to bring this back. Probably, I think it'll be okay. Just getting that tied in nice and, and I said these were these were durable, right? So I'm just gonna grab them just like I'm trying to think of a material that I would use, like it was um calf tail, like it was poly yarn, like whatever, just grab it, pull it back, and I should I grab my I'm getting dubbing on there from where I was showing you dubbing stuff. There's that stem. Don't want that to be too long, so I'll cut it out. Is that still? Oh, that's the glare on this light. Darn it. Uh, and so, just so you can see, see how that this is the shape of that that wing right now, and that looks fine. If I wanted to to make it like a little bit fatter, I can just grab and push it down. Okay, just make it over and see now it's a little bit fatter. So just whatever look you want. So we're gonna wrap this hackle. Let's see, that's a very similar. Type. You're welcome, Brad. I'm glad that glad that helps. Sometimes just that's why we like the rest of I anyway, and Katie really like doing this this live show because there there's tons of videos on YouTube on how to dub and how to do this. But being able to like to actually see someone do it live and know that like this is just really how you do it you don't have to don't have to overthink it you don't have to um there's no editing on the here or anything it's just this is just how it is and when i mess up like i kind of did here so my wings are a little bit far back just a touch but it'll be okay i'd rather my It'd be more like a cat skill style. My eye be extra clean, we'll say, than uh, than put too much hackle in here. So I've got that cut off. Make sure there's no major um, fibers that need to be cleaned up. A little I'm not trying to put a head on there. I was just trying to work my thread back. So now we can wet finish. One stop. Yeah, it's it's hard when you're watching the YouTube video to say, hey, can you? What, what, what is this? And another thing is it's hard to be a smart aleck too. And I know I'm kind of a member of that club and there's plenty of other charter members on here about being smart alecks. But that's part of the fun. 
Okay, so we got these two almost done. But all I'm going to do, see my handles that I was using to kind of, sometimes use them to kind of manipulate or pull or do, do whatever. And you see how I'm, I'm grabbing this and moving this around. Like, I'm, it's not not a big deal. Grab then I'm looking more at the silhouette. And there's a kind of sharp angle there. So I can kind of push that in a little bit. See how it looks. Pretty good silhouette. So now I'm going to grab, see if you can see this one. Yep. Cut that off and see the reason I say make your wings a little bit longer or either do them right or if you're going to air, air long. Because if they're a little bit long, all I would have to do is take my scissors, stick them right here, cut right there. And that, that little fiber is gone. Just like that. And my, my wing's shorter. What you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yes, about being a smart aleck. No, we don't have any of those on here, but it's a lot more fun. So there we go. There, there's a quick down and dirty March Brown um, Wally wing dry. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do the easy one, the super easy way. The absolutely super duper, duper duper. Katie, can you think of a funny way to say super duper? No. No. Not at all. Okay. So we're going to do, do the exact same thing, except for how we place this feather. So same thing. We've got brown, semperfly, 12-aught classic wax thread that my wet finisher grabbed a hold of the thread and pulled it out of the tube. So the biggest ring of a cut, you can just stop a thread cutting tool. Well, I like the one on my, my, um, my, I like the one on the back of my whip finisher because it's one less thing I've got to keep up with. But that thread cutting tool on Jeff's uh, tool is pretty darn cool. I don't like it. I would say I, don't, I like to minimize the amount of stuff I've got on my desk, but Katie would be bad over here, like cracking up. If she's like, you want to, let me show you what, show everyone what's on your desk right now. And that'll be crazy. Is that how long that took? Oh, or is it seven minutes until seven minutes until, well, maybe we'll get, we'll get a bunch of this done before that. So here's the super easy part. I don't know exactly what size to get, but I'm using a loon resin tip so this little guy right here this is actually green it looks blue there because of the light but this is green um they, they make them in all different sizes but this is this is the tool you can use this little straw but this gets it nice and tight and it's easy to put the feather in this end and have it come out this end and i'll show you what we're going to do in just a sec let me find a we'll use a one that's dyed make it a little bit a little bit nicer these are kind of not the prettiest, but I got one. Just floating on those. Yeah, I'd put a little uh, uh, a quail on there or something. I would, man. So we're going to prep, prep the feathers the same way. Just stripping it off. Okay, looking fine so far. Maybe pull off a little, a little bit more. Let's see, I'm going to do that measuring thing. Yeah, pull off a little more. You don't even have to pull off any if you don't want to. So if you want to do what I was doing and fold it up, you can, but not really necessary. So I'm just folding it. Let's get it right here so you can see. So folding it up. You can pull it down. I don't want to focus on this part of it because this is not... All I'm doing right now is I'm pulling this down. So when I grab the tip, I've got a nice separation point here. Okay. What I was doing on the other one, and we'll do on this, I'm going to kind of pull up just to prep the feather a little bit. Okay. I like this stompho bobbin. Are you asking me, Randy? Um, okay. So we've got this done. All I'm going to do is grab the feather. 
and wet it down so I can get it stick in there, stick it in here in that nozzle, push it all in there until it comes out the other end. Now we'll switch over to the, the hook. So this is that that's the tip right there coming out of the, the nozzle. I'm gonna set it right here. I'm gonna pull it out. So here's our separation point that we made, and that's what was taking me a second. Is I wanted to make sure that this was even, that was clean right there, that I didn't have like four or five extra fibers on one side and the other. As you can see, it's fine. See that? So the reason this is the super easy way is I put my nozzle right here, pull it out so you can see nicely. I don't want to pull too much out. Measure. So I wanted to go the length of the hook, so maybe a touch longer. That, because see that's, for me, looking at my way, I think looking at your way, that's exactly the length of the hook right there. So now I'm going to put the bobbin right here and hold it right on top. You can look and make sure it's nice and centered, just the way you want. I'm going to take my thread, loose wrap, pull up. Loose wrap, pull up, and I'm going to, Pull this out. Pull out slowly. Work my thread back. You know, all the material is probably enough. I'm going to pull this. Pull that off like that. So now you can see what I've got left is the stem. And here's those those few feathers that we got left over. So let's, let's look at our little ramp that we built. It looks okay. Just cut it like maybe a little bit uh, longer of an angle, but that looks fine. Let's cover that little bit up here. Okay. Now, now we're done. That, that part's done. Grab it, lift up. We're going to do our same jam those thread wraps under there to make it stand up a bit. See how my thread, I'm taking it, I'm pulling it back to the hook point, going around the hook point, back, do it again and again. And that should be good like that. See how it's standing up now? Let's tighten up my vise. This hook's a little bit thinner than the A-Rex, which is good. Can you show the Oh, let me finish this one. I sure will. Just remind me. Okay, so same thing. We grab, but like this, we grab three feathers on one side or three fibers on one side. So there's three coming off there. Pull it straight down. This side, grab three. Pull it straight down. Grab that. Oh, there's one broken one there. That's probably where the... I don't know what that would be, but I'm not going to let it ruin my day. Pull this the stem back, lock it in. Bring it all the way down to as far as I want it to go. Pop it off. And now we can do the same thing. So, any questions on that? Or I can actually probably, are we ready for a um, how are we doing on time, honey? Well, it's 9.45. Okay. So I figured Steve would uh, would have told us because he was like, oh, seven minutes, a few minutes ago. That's what made me think about it. I'm going to tie this these um, tails on and do the exact same thing I did a second ago. Go under, split them. One wrap in between, grab the other side, one wrap over top in between. You got a figure eight there. Now we'll work our thread all the way up to the front. Keeping everything from spinning around. Just like that. And that's not the prettiest by any means, but we've got our two kind of our two tails there, kind of didn't count them too well. And we got that. So the um, next thing we would do is um, 
do a body wrap haggle. Um, but since Al asked, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do our drawing, and um, then I'll I'll be getting set up to to do the technique and and do that that one more time. Oh, count on me, I get lost and forget. Well, we're going to do it now. So, Katie, what are we doing? Pick a number between one and two hundred. Okay, so pick a number between one and and two hundred. Katie, you want? And um, and that will be for the and Katie's going to keep them all lined up. Uh, and we've been doing one through one hundred, but the last time uh, I think two weeks ago there was about sixty of you on. So we figured that um, one and two hundred will be better, less chance of people the same person choose them because it was like, oh well, you had that one first. Um, I'm going to set this timer for for two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, so you got two minutes from right now. Um, pick a number between one and 200. And while you're doing that, I will look at my hook here. I'm going to cut my thread and I'm going to get that wonderful tool that we all love to see. It's a good old razor blade. And we'll get this starting over. Cut it off. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. All right. So now we're ready to go whenever, and we'll do a fancier color one, maybe. That way, maybe you can see better. Let's do a. a yellow just for the fun of it. That'd be kind of good on a little sulfur or a little. Uh, I don't know, I think the yellow would be a good attractor color for a wing. One minute. Oh boy, we're almost there. So I'm just got my yellow. This is a small one, yellow mallard feather. It'll work. Who wants to join? Support we figured out how to do it. Yep, just if anyone has a problem joining the membership, let I know Al had an issue and he's got it now. So thank you, Al, for doing that. And Kevin, I think Kevin was one of the first ones. So thank you, Kevin. Why was that fly whacked? Just to start over. I don't know. I wish I had a good reason for you, Stephen, but. This one, uh, one of them's. I want one of them to go to you, and um, that one wasn't perfect enough. That's why. What's up, Michael? All right, so here we go. The numbers have been drawn. Let's turn it over to Katie and let her. You want to turn the camera on you for a sec? Yeah. Cool. So we have um, our number. Chat GPT picked it before the show tonight, and we actually had somebody guess the number right on the nose. So our big winner tonight is the person who picked 87. Who picked 87? That would be Josh Riston. Josh w Riston won? Yeah. I'm trying to think, didn't he win the? I don't know, but I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's <All right>. random. <laughs> so way to go. And as you can see here, this was um, the pick here. All right. Well, show. congratulations, Josh. Um, that was not, that, that's not, that's funny. Patrick, um, you did, uh, what's it called, a super thanks. So next month, if you like, um, ask, ask Al or Steve or some, if you'll click. If, Josh says this is his first time winning. Okay, good, good. But it was, maybe it was a different Josh. But it doesn't matter anyway. It's no, random. It's, you just you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good job, Josh. Um, email us your um, your address, and we'll get it mailed out to you. Hopefully this week. Hopefully, because only Katie's getting out. Um, yes. Good job. Send us your address, <laughs> jo Josh. You worked hard on that one. Good job picking. Um, seem to have twisted a bit. Well, we're going to do another one as far as just the wings part. But I said Josh Riston sends us pictures every week. That's why I guess that's why his, his name is familiar because I, I was like, did we? But like you said, it's just 
with your little random picker. It's not mine. It belongs to the world. That's right. That's right. Um, so Patrick, you are correct. You um, donated nine ninety nine, I believe, and I was like, "Holy cow!" And um, so, thank you very much. But that was a one time thing. The if you'll click join below your screen right now, it should be join. And um, if it's not, then ask some of these guys right here because they were running the same issue. But if there's join, that's where it is. But we're totally fine. Um, you can do it next month. It's fine. Um, send it with the fly this week. Awesome, Josh. That sounds great. Um, it's not whack till he UV resins those wings. No, we're not going to put any resin on the wings. Um, so okay, so here's we're going to show the the technique for the the simple way one more time. So let's switch over to the side view. All I've got is my nozzle here. I got a nozzle. And I haven't done anything but separate the feather. Okay. So I'm just holding it by the tip here. You see, I'm holding my tip. It's not, I haven't done anything like the trying to, because it makes it seem kind of difficult when I'm like trying to fold it up like that. I'm not going to do that. We'll pull it down like this. Make it a little wet so it's more of a point. Stick it in here. You see that? So it comes out. Start pulling. Now I'll switch over to the to the hook, and I'm I'm not like the best fly tire in the world, but I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something here. Let's see. Oh yeah, T red. May have to update YouTube like me. Could be Al. So I'm just going to. And as far as as opposed to hackle that I've been using, if you want to wrap CDC right here after you're done with the fly. That's fine. Do all all sorts of things. Okay, so see right there's my separation point. See it? Grab it, pull it out until it's roughly the length of the the hook right here. So we're good so far. Put one wrap, pull up, start working it back. Now when I'm Pulling up, see how it twisted right there? See how it's kind of, it's a little bit off? So you can see, watch this when I move my nozzle. See how it straightens it back up? That's exactly what we want. So if you see it twisted, just go ahead and grab it now. Before you start, before you peel it, before you cut it, before you do anything else, grab it now and try to keep it right on top of the hook shank. Get it so it looks like that. See how we're pretty much straight? That yellow feather is easier to see. Yep, well, that's why I'm trying to switch it up as much as we can. Hey, what's up, Gary? Fancy seeing you on here. Um, Everyone's talking. I think Truman and uh, Howie were talking about their slackers because they're a few minutes late. I'm like, good grief, Gary's not even here. Um, so you see how the, it, you got the stem that's pretty much right in line with the hook shape, maybe a touch touch off now. But um, if it's rolled to one side majorly to the other, you will have issues. So I'm going to pull this off some more so I can get a nice little cut to it like that. And that time I tried to make my cut a little bit more uh, or a little less aggressive. So I'll pull it out. And now we're... That part's good. For the next one, I'm going to pinch this. Bring my thread down. So we have a nice little taper. See that? Cool taper. Oh, we drove home in a blizzard. Now we're going to bring it up. Kind of, not I won't say open spar wraps, but we kind of, we're going to kind of Cover up what we what we can of the feather that's showing. Grab this, pull it back. Here's where we're going to build our little thread dam. Now, let's see if I make this make sense. If I wrap straight up and down, if I just go up and down, up and down, I'm not doing anything but building a ball. I want to take my thread right up against this um, this feather, bring it down. The far hard angle to the rear, hard angle to the rear, and, and, and then up 
and then just sneak it right around. So I'm just sneaking this right around. If I'm just putting all my thread on this side, so if I'm going like this, so where it's facing me, I've got it going towards the hook eye. When it's facing you, it's going towards the feather or um, towards the rear. Then we'll have too much pull on this side. So I want it to go back, back, around, back, back, around. That's just helping to stand it up evenly. Then every now and then you want to bring your thread back down the ramp and back up so your, your wraps don't slide off. So see how I'm doing that? And when I'm done, should roughly, see so that's almost going backwards, roughly um, stick up. You flatten thread? No, I haven't. I haven't twisted or unflattened or flattened or anything. When I'm when I'm doing that section right there, when I'm I'm building a little dam, I don't want it thread. I want it to be kind of tight, but I, I didn't even pay any attention what it was what it was looking like. So this grab it. I don't have much here to grab. Can't even see it hardly. So I grab the tip. I'll do this one kind of backwards. Pull it down. And this one, grab the tip, grab three fibers, three to five, maybe three to six fibers, see them, grab them, pull the tip away, and then just pull it right out. Now we can adjust. just like so and if you want so they're kind of they're not very spread out which i'm like they're just regular old um uh catskill wings which i guess wood duck put a fig figure eight right there see how that spread them out now we've got them got them spread and as far as manhandling them, just grab them, move them, move them the way you want. If your first, if, if it's your first one, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, get in there and and break them. See how see how much it's going to take to to break them because that that's not that big a deal, um, not that big a deal at all. All we're doing is we're grabbing grabbing a feather like this, bring it down, grabbing the tip so it's even. Okay, tip so it's even. Finding our well, I got a little piece stuck in it now. Find this, sticking it in, pulling it out, just like that. I'm ready to ready to rock. See that? See how easy that is? Alrighty, a little chilly. Where are we getting snow at? I think it's colored teal feathers. So beautiful. Um. I think that's for uh, Mallard. That was, um, yeah, that's what this is here. Just Mallard flanks. That's pretty much all I've been using is Mallard flanks. Just different different colors, natural to whatever color you want. Um, so Katie, I'll switch it over to me real quick. We'll turn it over. Congratulations to Josh Riston for winning this cubic zirconia dubbing rake. These, uh, I don't know if they still are, but they were on sale at Jay Stalker for $31, which is a pretty good deal. Um, we used in the past couple weeks. Pretty cool to get your own dubbing off of Hairs masks and other fur. But um, the resins, okay. So, guys, thank you so, so much. It's been an awesome time. There's a few of you on you on Instagram. Come over and check us out on YouTube at some time. We'd love to see you live there, asking questions and hopping on and joining in the fun. Um, we really appreciate you guys. We're looking forward to seeing your submissions, anything at all, using those uh, the Wally Wings. Whatever you want to do, wrap with CDC, do anything you want, just play with it because they once you get kind of the hang of it, they're super easy, not a big deal, and they are they are durable. So. Don't overthink it. Just grab some thread, grab some mallard, and wear it out. Head to Ashville so we can unhonk the... Oh, please do, Kevin. Absolutely. Um, so we will see you live next Wednesday. Um, we look forward to seeing your stuff. Until then, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And Have a great weekend. And thank you so much to all promoters and supporters. <laughs> 
Good job, Katie.